Hello and welcome to the Sustainability Leaders Series. I'm Oriel Morrison. The world's manufacturing industry is a major contributor to environmental damage, responsible for two thirds of our greenhouse gas emissions. Industrial factories are to blame for much of the world's air pollution. They release huge amounts of sewage, industrial waste and toxic chemicals and consume an extraordinary amount of water. But the rising focus on sustainability is driving innovation in the space. The world's newest and most innovative factories produce their own energy, have eliminated waste and use sustainable materials. And that's just the start of where we're heading. In sectors like the automobile industry, medical equipment and aircraft parts, the term remanufacturing is becoming more common. The process uses 70 to 90% of the materials recovered from its used phase, so the impact on the environment is significantly lower, needs less energy, and is not as resource intensive. Processes using digital capabilities are also boosting productivity and reducing costs by providing greater visibility into production processes, equipment wear and tear, and energy usage. Essential in the journey towards net zero, the International Renewable Energy Agency says renewables could grow to close to 30% of energy consumption in global manufacturing by 2030, if it's available and costs continue to fall. I'm joined now by Francisco Betty, Head of Advanced Manufacturing and Value Chains at the World Economic Forum. Francisco, welcome. It's great to have you with us today. Delighted to be, to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Now, we're obviously here to talk about manufacturing, uh, your speciality. How forward thinking are manufacturers globally today? Are they open to the changes that clearly need to be made? They definitely are. I mean, if you look at what, what the pandemic brought into the world of manufacturing was a, a, what we could call a perfect storm, right? We saw disruptions that, that, that we probably have not seen over the past 100 years and, and disruptions that affected both the supply and the demand side. I think what is, what, is, what is clear is that there were some changes that were already happening along the way, but then the pandemic played a major accelerated role. And when you look at the new global context in which manufacturers are operating, I think that they got an additional extra push for accelerating what we call their digital transformation journeys. Mm. Now, despite the fact that manufacturers are very much aware of emissions, greenhouse gas emissions on a global level are continuing to climb. What needs to be happening within this industry to reverse this trend? How big a change needs to happen? Well, a massive change has to happen. And, and if you look at how manufacturing companies need to transform themselves today, I think the biggest challenge is that you still need to optimize for efficiency and productivity. But at the same time, you need to transform the way in which you operate, not just your facilities, but your entire value chains for sustainability. Now, the change that is required is, is quite massive. It's, it's going away from what a traditional way of making things into what we call a net zero. A approach to operations and also a circular approach to operations. It's the combination of a circularity with the different ways um, when it comes to the, the energy we use, when it comes to the uh, approaches we take in our production process that will help us reduce emissions. But that requires, first of all, a significant mindset change. You know, you're, you're absolutely spot on. It certainly is a mindset change and there's that level of education that's required again to make this change. But there are other implementation barriers as well, like high costs. Who should be funding the changes and certainly the research that still needs to be done before we make the changes? There are multiple approaches that can be, that can be based on what we observe so far, multiple approaches that can be taken to, to the funding challenge, right? But what is important to highlight is that technology can play a major role in reducing and lowering those costs. If you, if you look at some of the solutions that are available on the market today and that companies can adopt to have what we call end-to-end, -end, first of all, connectivity, but then visibility 
across their entire value chains. Well, those are not just enabling you to track and trace the products that you are making, how you are sourcing them, who is using them, and how they can be retrieved. They're also helping you have a better view on your levels of stocks. They are helping you have a better view on what's the situation with each of your suppliers. I mean, we, what we saw with the pandemic is that some companies didn't even know who the suppliers of their suppliers were. It was a completely great area that was extremely hard to, to, to manage, especially in challenging times. So I think that because of technology, we now have the opportunity to lower the cost of these transitions towards security and sustainability, because the benefits that technology brings can deliver impact both on the efficiency, productivity, cost reduction front, mm -hmm. and help us be circular and help us achieve net zero targets. Mm -hmm. so, so you just talked about technological innovation there, Francisco. What is the most exciting innovation you've seen recently? I, I could say that what AI is delivering already today in manufacturing today is quite amazing. I mean, over the past, if you look at the past 10 years, there was a significant increase when it comes to the adoption of IoT, connectivity, and large volumes of data started to be connected, uh, collected in manufacturing, across manufacturing operations, both within facilities, but across supply ecosystems as well. And, and what happened with those volumes of data, thanks also to the, the deployment of sensors and other ways to capture that data, is that manufacturers now have huge databases that can fit the algorithm that can help optimize what we can call preventive uh, maintenance, that can help optimize quality control, that can help optimize operators' performance as well by giving them real-time analyzed, real-time information to make decisions on the sport. Mm. So you talked about the most successful companies there, uh, Francisco. When you look at it from a geographic level, which countries are, are seeing the most success? We saw over the last couple of years, we saw a lot of progress happening, I could say, in Europe, China and the US as well. I think that Europe with, you know, Germany, France and Italy embracing or, or, or driving the Industry 4.2 conversation um, has done a, trem a tremendous progress. And that also triggered others within the, the EU community and the UK to, to also accelerate pace. China has been massively investing in new technologies. If you look, I mean, I had the chance to visit some of some facilities just before the, the, the pandemic. I mean, the progress that has been made when it comes to technology adoption, the approach to digital transformation is quite impressive as well. And the US as well is coming on board quite, quite rapidly. Mm, absolutely is. Uh, Francisco, it's been such a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. The International Centre for Industrial Transformation has been working closely with the World Economic Forum to raise awareness around the latest developments and manufacturing trends. CEO and founder Raymond Klein joins us now. Welcome, Raymond. Thanks so much for joining us today. Now, what was the impetus to start Insight? Actually, I worked for Siemens and I left Siemens mid of last year, end of last year. And the intention was to build a non-profit organization because I could see that ESG data will be somehow, let's call it the gold of tomorrow, to give guidance to manufacturers in which direction they should develop their approach during uh, for digital transformation and sustainability. How quickly, Raymond, is the manufacturing industry transforming? Very, very slow. Here I need to go a little bit into history. In 2013, OECD, it's called the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, released the report, The Future of Productivity. The result of the report was that worldwide the labor productivity is declining. But the technologies to turn this effect around do exist, but the people do not know how to enable them or they don't know that these technologies exist. And now, when we look to 2013, Industry 4.0 was invented to accelerate this process of enablement. Nine years later, if you ask this question now, look to America, the enablement of technology application is 30%. But the highest enablement of the so-called technology is cybersecurity. But cybersecurity doesn't drive productivity. 
So what you see is 30% is pretty low in the application and technology. If you go then to Europe, it's around about 25. And in Asia Pacific, including China, we have 20% in England. So quite lagging behind. And if you differentiate MNCs, multinationals, with SMEs, and the SMEs are the backbone normally of the economy, you see that the SMEs really struggle and lagging behind because of their, let's call it operational focus, looking really in the daily operation of productivity and improvement of processes. Obviously, cost is a big issue here as well, isn't it, Raymond? Certainly, if you're, if you're comparing size of companies. Cost is an issue, but uh, the results are not always, or the digital solutions are not always a matter of cost. Because it could be that they already have proof of concepts and you just need to implement it. They do exist. But the problem is really a matchmaking because if each manufacturer has a different problem and always they need a digital solution customized to their problem, and this is the current effect. So you need to pay a solution, not a product because you cannot enable on your own. And the topic is that these costs, the return of investment very often is not clear to the manufacturers. It, it seems that the demand for circularity continues to grow and the stakeholder pressure is out there as well. Why do you believe that success is so elusive given the pressure to change? Actually, you're your question before was a little bit the answer, the cost. Mm. There was, you know, creativity is all about innovate and driving future and apl applying technology. Cost reduction is not very creative. But when I look to my, let's say, last period I was working for, it was very much cost reduction driven also. Doing more with the same, but not enabling new technologies. For, for the manufacturing industry. So here we see that the manufacturers, we have two different layers. We have the, the, the management layer who does the budgeting for the technologies. Uh, unfortunately, very often they don't know what to budget, how to budget. And we have the job shop people working with the new technologies who are sometimes afraid losing their job because productivity might mean automation, might mean machine learning might mean losing the job, but this is not the case. In case in these skills future, the employees on the job, job shop need to be upgraded and even have the chance to earn more salary. Really good to talk to you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting. And that wraps it up for this episode of the Sustainability Leaders series. I'm Oriel Morrison. For more in this 12-part series, head to apacnetwork.com.